Welcome, you horrible lot. Today we are reviewing Speak No Evil, a dark, bleak look at uh, crossing one's boundaries. Um, yeah, this was recommended to me by Graham D. Wilson on Twitter, and thank you uh, for that recommendation, because this would have slipped under my radar otherwise. Um, this is currently on Amazon Prime. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. From Danish actor turned director Christian Taftrup, and I sincerely apologize why I'm just butchering your name right now, uh, who co wrote the screenplay with his brother Mads Taftrup. This brilliantly dark cautionary tale is about letting others cross your boundaries. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of themes at play here. There's alpha male versus beta male. There's um, how far do you go without telling someone, you know what, what you've just said there, uh, there's politeness, and then there's there's just like letting people walk all over you. Oh, no, no, that that's fine. I insist. <laughs> I insist. There's uh, elements of uh, Michael Haneke's funny games at play here. It's very similar, and it's kind of... There's almost comedic value without it being humorous. Um, there, it does take a malevolent turn um, towards the end. And the whole part of this film that you're, you're just looking at your screen, you're thinking, I would never do this. So here's the point. It starts off uh, innocuous enough. Um, a couple, uh, Bjorn and Luisa with their daughter Agnes are going on holiday. Uh, they're in Tuscany. And it's this nuclear type family setup. Um, Bjorn is a man who you feel through little sideways glances and awkward silences, he doesn't feel fulfilled in his life. We skal for øvrigt have købt nogle støvler til Agnes. Og jeg tænker lidt dem her. Ja. Um, he has this uh, wife who's vegetarian, Lisa, but you get the uh, impression she wears the pants in the relationship and he's almost succumb to this cuck type role uh, <laughs> that that's not right maybe uh, he's he's succumbed to this uh, uh um, yeah no he's pretty much of a cuck and they meet this other couple patrick and karen who are charismatic um there's a scene early on where I don't know what kind of holiday this is this isn't some kind of 18 to 30s thing but there's a whole big table where Clearly, a bunch of strangers are just eating together. What you will, you know, you do what you like. But um, and they have a little uh, powwow because uh, Agnes loses. She's got this bunny, this uh, this this bunny, Nuni, 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 Nina. I can't remember what the bunny's called. She loses the bunny, and um, Bjorn goes, "Ah, oh, God, I'm going to have to backtrack across the whole of Tuscany to find this thing." He finally, eventually, finds it when he comes back um, to Louisa and Agnes, um, uh, Patrick, and. Uh, Karen are there and Patrick's like wow man like you went you you were searching this city for her bunny that's that's heroic and already therein lies the the seed of this film um Patrick is giving Bjorn this kind of like wow man you did this thing that's great that's awesome and and Bjorn is like Wow, yeah. You know what? Thanks for that. I needed a bit of a pat on the back. I needed a bit of a boost. You know, I'm not getting that much in my life. So already there's this um, sublimal infiltration uh, that Patrick has sewn into uh, Bjorn's psyche now. So Bjorn, Agnes and Louisa are from, they're Danish. And um, Patrick and Karen are from Denmark. And they go home. They go their respective ways. And some time has passed, and they get a postcard from the charismatic um, alpha male Patrick and Karen saying, like, hey, we really enjoyed your company. You should come down and visit us sometime. Uh, most people, I think, at this point would sort of turn around and go, like, I, you know what? We had a good holiday. We met these new people. They were nice, but they're not going to become longtime friends. But this is where Bjorn is starting to feel unfulfilled. They're having like dinner with other couples and he's just sitting there just just taking it in. He's not really uh, engaging at all. So he's met this charismatic character and he goes, like, you know what? Let's go against the grain a little bit. Let, let's go visit these guys. So they do. 
There are subtle gaslighting techniques that Patrick uh, develops and adapts to the, the Dane's tolerance. Um, one of the first being is that uh, Louise, is, uh, she's a vegetarian, and Patrick tests this almost immediately, saying, I have just cooked this uh, really nice meat, you need to try it. They're trapped, uh, Bjorn and Louise are trapped in their dynamic of politeness. So as you would, you're visiting this couple, you don't want to rock the boat too much. So she kind of like says, you know, I'm vegetarian, uh, but I eat fish. That comes up later on when uh, they go to this uh, roadhouse. And fish is not meat? Of course, um, but it's better for the environment. And the way the fishing industry works and how we treat the oceans is not affecting the climate? Um, it's, it's, it's these little nuanced uh, factors that go into play with this film. And it starts off really small things that you kind of like think, okay, you could throw this away. You know, there's these little things, but then it starts to grow. The whole tension builds by these small incremental moments that build and build. So the dinner is on us? Oh, that's so kind. Thanks, man, thanks. Bjorn and Louise feel powerless as they experience more offenses that unequivocally cross the line. There's a point where she's in the shower and Patrick just comes in to use the toilet. The kind of civil, polite side of your brain is thinking, well, I guess this is their house. This is how they do things. I'm just going to shower here and hope it goes, uh, he makes his duty and goes away. But then there's that reptilian side of your brain that's going like, this is wrong. On some fundamental, uh, you know, animalistic sort of level, this is wrong. What's going that they, They're invading your personal boundaries. And this is what this film is all about. And this is, it, it delights in these type of small moments. There are clues of this impending horror long before we get to the kind of crescendo of the third act. And this is signaled by, um, sorry, I'm going to have to apologize, Sunni Kolchja's orchestral score. Like, um, the score in this is just, it's foreboding. Um, there's elements at play here where it's just like you get these, like, not trumpets, but like, um, you just, these Brum sort of moments that are just these unwavering lines uh, beneath the surface. And this is what this whole film is about, really. Um, yeah, so the couple are staying there for the weekend. Um, by the second day, they feel, or Louise feels, that there's just something not right going on here. There's been too many indiscrepancies. There's been too many moments of these small uh, indiscretions that she can't abide. She doesn't like this. They want to leave. It's been a minute. He just does this sometimes. It's uh, part of his disease. Oh, yeah. What is that? Abba is what you call congenital aglossia. Meaning, basically, he's born with, without a tongue or with a much smaller tongue than you and me. One moment is when Agnes, um, where Louise uh, finds that Agnes, the daughter, has, uh, she, she's gone into um, Patrick and Karen's room and she's sleeping there and she opens the door and um, you just see Patrick's butt on display here and that's when she's had enough. It's like, no, 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 my daughter is not sleeping in your room. Um, we're going to go take her away now. The Bible verse from which the film takes its title also includes the mandate, be gentle and polite to all people. As the couple spend their weekend um, with Patrick and Karen, it becomes, uh, there's this platonic relationship that you have with Bjorn. Um, he confesses that he feels that he is, he's basically confessing that he doesn't feel like a man anymore. He can't remember the last time. Oh, no, uh, he basically says that um, he's smiling all the time. He's put on this facade, this kind of mask um, in every situation because he can't actually let his true feelings out. Um, and Patrick is this full whirlwind. Like, he does what he wants. Um, he literally says what he likes. Um, he does what he likes. He lies. There's a point where, at the beginning of the film... Um, Karen says that he's a doctor um, later on uh, Louise cuts herself and uh, Bjorn goes oh could you have a look and he's like I, why do you want me to have a look and he goes well because you're a doctor and he goes I'm not a doctor and he goes well why did you why did you say you were and he goes I lied fundamentally I think that um, the, the, the couple uh, Patrick and 
Karen are, you don't find out much about them. You know that they are a force of evil. They are literally um, the kind of unfiltered ego or id. Um, they have no filter. They will literally say what they want. Uh, they know what they want. And uh, and in effect, um, they, they live this monstrous cycle. Um, now, that's the main kind of point of the film uh, without going into spoilers. I'm going to go into spoilers now. So essentially... Um, Patrick and Karen have a child called Abel. Now, Abel has no tongue. They um, basically say that he had a condition uh, when he was young. But um, we find out later on that essentially what they're doing is they're luring people to where they live. And they're essentially kidnapping the couple's child. So um, Bjorn wakes up one night. Uh, he has the TV that's on. Um, he goes down into the other side room and he finds all these uh, postcard pictures of other families with pa Patrick and um, Karen. And they're like with different children. So what they're effectively doing is like swapping children. They'll um, kind of befriend other couples, invite them down to wherever they are. Because there's one point as well where Bjorn says, oh, what do you do then? When he, uh, when he finds out he's not a doctor, he goes, I don't work. He goes, well, you're unemployed? And to the kind of very sort of set it by the rules beyond this, this distresses him. And he's like, yeah. And you kind of get the sense that maybe what this couple are doing are they're luring these other couples in, possibly, you know, well, they are stealing their children and then selling all their, like their cars and their wares and all their kind of fundamental uh, God-given clothes and boots and whatnot. And they're surviving off that. Um, so it culminates with uh, Bjorn and uh, Louisa leaving. Um, they get sidetracked. Um, they go off on the road. It's precisely the concealment of Patrick and Karen's endgame and the way they uh, bewitch their unwilling victims um, that is a, actually a, a, a great look at human psychology. There's a part towards the end without spoiling too much that um uh Bjorn says to Patrick you know why are you doing this why are you doing this <laughs> because you let me <laughs> you you look inside you look inward and you kind of go to yourself like if I was in that situation and this is this is that type of film it's that kind of film it's the what if scenario uh which some of the best horror films, kind of uh, 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 the guideline. You have to ask yourself, what if? If I, what if I was in that situation? You know, these small, these small incremental, these small um, intricate little games that are being played. Um, when do you turn around and sort of say, actually, you know what? You're being a bit of a dick. Stop that. Um, and this is what that film excels in. It excels in that kind of really awkwardness. There's no jump scares in this film. There's no, um, you know, there's no gore as such. There are some elements that make you think wince, that make you wince towards the end. But ultimately, this is a film that's about um, the kind of uneasy, awkward silences, the sideways glances of your partner if you're in the same situation. The kind of point of where you go like, when's enough enough? When do you kind of turn around and say, actually, no. And this is what uh, Taftrup leads us into, is a merciless resolution. Uh, there's an unflinching, shocking ending, uh, which I won't give away. But uh, I think you should watch this film. Um, it's highly recommended. Um, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to watch this. Thank you for watching. You can catch See No Evil on Shudder, and I highly recommend that you do. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.